Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour, where we help entrepreneurs become better individuals day by day by discussing important topics that go for all walks of life. Today we're talking about that thing that everybody's scared of doing, breaking out of that comfort zone. Oh, Kareem, I want to be on camera. I want to be on the Power Hour, but I'm just too scared. Let me make an excuse. Uh, you know, a YouTube show is too hard. Nobody would watch it anyway. Nobody wants to see what I'm doing on YouTube. And that's actually what I thought like four or five years ago. Why should I make a YouTube channel? I have nothing interesting. Nobody would even watch my stuff. And lo and behold, I created a channel with Chris and other personal ones that people come to now. And I know I'm going to get bigger and I know I'm going to expose more people to what I'm doing. But that was just a little tiny comfort zone thing I had to break by actually realizing if I got out of that thing and put myself on camera, I can make a difference in the world. But it's not just about me. Don't take mine. It's your show. I want to hear about how you broke out of some comfort zones or how you're trying to break out of your comfort zone right now. Um... How come no, nobody's talking tonight? What's going on? <laughs> I'll jump out. I'll be the first. Um, I think uh, a lot of it comes back to how people perceive themselves and how they look at themselves and think. You know, goes back to some of the things you guys have talked about. I think in uh, another one of the imp uh, entrepreneur empower hours that I've been on, you guys were talking about you know perception and what we see what how we see ourselves as compared to how other people see ourselves and we hear a lot of things from other people that we internalize and say oh well because so and so said this or because we put more emphasis on what they say rather than believing in our heart that we really have the ability or the um, skills or talents to be able to do that we let whatever somebody else says overpower that and so then we become afraid and we kind of box ourselves in into this comfort zone of where we'll only go so far before we kind of say oh well somebody else can do it that's kind of you know some of the things i've learned yeah i know for myself it was like get off your ass get up and just do it that's all it is. I just do it and I know I have to do it because I don't want to work for somebody else anymore. I'm tired of getting up at six o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'm willing to do whatever the hell it takes to get to the finish line. Um, and that, that's just what it is. So many people are like, no, I can't, I can't get there, man. That's too much work or no, I, mean, I just don't want to do it anymore. It's like, so you want to go to that slave job every morning that has you up at five 30 instead, because all the steps are laid out for you. You know what you have to do. <sighs> not really where I want to be. Don't know about anybody else, but uh, that's definitely not how I want to live. I like, I like what, Bill said. <laughs> <laughs> what did Bill say? He said, break out at Toastmasters. I can attest to that because when I was oh, yeah. a kid, when I was five, I was pulling my shirt over my head. True story like this. I was so scared of audiences. I didn't want to be in front of one. I didn't want to have anything to do with one. But I started doing band and chorus because I like music. So I had an interest. And then eventually I decided I would go to a Toastmasters after college. But what it took for me to do that was realizing that something that that scary can be fun if I didn't think about it so much. It was the same thing. I, I'm still scared of heights a little bit, but what's scary is not really the height. It's me thinking about it. It's me thinking, oh, that's so high. I could fall. I could get hurt. I could die. And then instead of thinking about that, just taking a jump off some rocks into a waterfall, and then I'm like, oh, it really was all in my head. A lot of people are stuck in comfort zones, and I know I was stuck because it was all in my head. It was all fake things that were never going to happen. And it's the same thing with what we're doing now. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Dan. You look 
looked like you were going to start saying something, so <laughs> I was no, going to... No, that's why Kareem muted me, I guess, so I don't jump on you. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, I was going to say, um, like, for me, one of the instances that kind of reinforced this for me for a long time, like, speaking out and in public, was in um, ninth grade, I ran for what was called class activities chairman, which is, was part of our student council, um, you know, leadership stuff and things like that. And I'd always wanted to be on that. I've always felt and seen myself as being out there as a leader. But what happened was I figured, okay, they give us a podium. I could stand behind that. And while my knees are knocking, my knees will be knocking, but nobody will see that. And I can try and be calm and um, okay, you know, up top. Well, when it came time to gain my speech, there was no podium. And so I'm up there with my speech in my hand and my hands are shaky like crazy. So for me, that kind of reinforced a bad, a bad thing. So it kind of carried over into when I started doing um, network marketing and stuff and having to get out and uh, like decide I wanted to do uh, videos and stuff and things like that, um, that it took me a little while to get to doing videos. I had no problems with doing blog posts, but to do a video, and then finally, um, somebody just said, you know, the best way to get over it is like Cream said, just kind of do it, you know, even if you do one for like yourself and then just do it so you get comfortable with it and share it with a couple people or something like that and get positive reinforcement and then finally just do one. I finally just decided to do it and I finally and put it out there and then I realized Oh, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so, you know, and then I've had some feedback and people have seen my videos all along with my blog posts and stuff. And it's like, Oh, now I love to do videos, you know, for my blogs and stuff like that. In fact, I almost always do my blog posts with my videos. So, you know, it was just kind of like realizing in my head that, you know, just because of a one bad experience does not mean that it's going to be that way all the time. Or I, I just, got more confidence in myself from there. That's awesome. Because it actually is the whole thinking, oh, it's so scary. It's so big. I can't lift that weight. I'll die. And then I do, or I can't do 20 push-ups. It's so hard. And then you do it and you're like, hmm. You know, 10 minutes later, I was scared to death. <laughs> and then 10 minutes later, I feel like I'm the man. And that's really what I want everybody here to walk away with. What do you think, Sharon? What do you think, James? Break you out of your comfort zone. Get this discussion going. I know what I was going to say. I want to reach through the screen at people who make excuses and go, wake up. You're not living the life you want. You got to do something about it. You know, but people are just, it's hard because they're in, this inertia and they're in this sleep, this daze, this sleep. You know, The Walking Dead should be a reality TV show because that's literally what we're living in. In this day and age, it seems. It's like, man, don't you want anything more out of life? But again, that's not my responsibility. But I would like to be able to motivate people and go, I mean, you don't go to a, a Tony Robbins conference and fall asleep because he's so damn boring. <laughs> no, he's looking at you and he's going, hey, do you want to make money or, Hey, do you want to change your life? Or, Hey, do you want to do this? Well, this is what you need to do to do this. And, uh, I want to give speeches like that. I want to be able to go out there. Kareem and I do the entrepreneur power hour live at some seminar and just get people raising their hand going, yes, I want change. Yes. I want my life to be better. Uh, yes. I want to know my true potential. And I think that the more you cultivate that and the more that you express that and experience that day to day, the more you can give that energy to other people. But again, they got to be open to receiving that energy before you can translate it to them in a way they're going to understand you. You know, I like being animated. I want to get up there and be, use my body language and start yelling at people like quit making excuses, get the hell up and do it. Like that's what you got to do because people don't listen to you when you go, well, do you want to change your life? Yeah, yeah, I do too. Someday. <laughs> you know, someday. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'd sure like to know someday. I mean, that's that's not going to work, right? So, yeah. Go ahead, Sharon. Um, well, 
I never, I never knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. You know, it, it never dawned on me. But I'm like, yeah, heck, let me try it anyway. But um, you know, g- getting out of your comfort zone. I once did a video with somebody. Um, on YouTube. I don't know if everybody here has seen it, but I. I did my first uh, video interview, but I was nervous. I was so scared. <laughs> I was so scared. I had like the butterflies all over me and all of that. And then, you know, I haven't fully broken out of it yet, but hopefully one day. Um, you know, threw a couple of things on here, and you know, I don't know how to work. I don't know how to work my webcam at the time, but. Hey, I can learn. Um, I don't want to make excuses, but I definitely could learn. I think we all can. That's why we're here. There's one we put back in the... Francis, you're unmuted. Hi. Hi. Oh, but I will mute back off. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to. She's breaking out of her comfort zone. Um, She's unmuted. <laughs> I'm, I'm risky. I play it rough. Are, are you? Actually, then let me use you as a guinea pig. See, you told me you were scared of cameras, right? You videos, you're like, ah, duck. And then, yes. And then one day I was out of my comfort zone because you and Christopher challenged me. Uh oh. <laughs> Gotta challenge people. Yeah. And they demonstrated how easy it was and just. Take a crack at it, people, and step out of your comfort zone. And now I'll do a video in a heartbeat. Cool. Awesome. Oh, cool. You can go from, it's like Bruce Wayne. You can go from being scared of bats to literally being Batman. And I thought that was a goofy <laughs> analogy, but it works. I, that's why he's my one of my favorite superheroes. He took his fear. What other superheroes taken their fear, regardless that he has a million dollars and a butler is cool. But he took his fear and actually changed it into a superpower. Mm-hmm. That's really breaking out of your comfort zone. That was what I'm doing now. I'm like, no one will ever watch my YouTube videos. If I have a conference, nobody would go to it. What? That's that. <laughs> And that's why they're not showing well, up. You, you know, we know what to do. You know, once we get big enough, we could start yelling at people. That works. I mean, look at Alex Beckham's channel. He's got millions of subscriptions, and he's yelling and swearing at people because he's tired of people making it. Well, look at, look at how big is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he's big, All too. All he does is yell and insult people. <laughs> I'm not going to go that far, but I do want to be able to be colorful and animated and professional. Well, if I, guess if I, I combine all three, you know, I want to combine those three elements being colorful, animated and professional, because I think that's going to help our channel grow immensely instead of people just sitting there watching us sound all, you know, drawl and boring and there's no animation. There's no enthusiasm. <laughs> Nobody's going to stick around and watch our shit. So we got to make sure that we're making people feel good and excited like wow these guys really want to motivate people well that's what we want to do i should pre-record the arguments that are disagreements (laughs) (laughs) oh boy i don't know about that then i would be not only attacking him probably calling a few names but i get his attention Who's now, if I adapted that to the Power Hour, we'd be rated number one. <laughs> Who are you talking about, Francis? I said if I adapted the no, disagreements with who? opportunities and disagreements that I had with my husband. And oh. oh. a lot because he just gets tired of arguing with me. Then we'd be number one on the rankings. <laughs> Well, oh, see, that's that's the thing from you know being like uh, Chris was saying. You want to be powerful. You want to be out there. You want to be you know animated. You you, you want to be yourself though too, but you also want to build people up and lift them oh, yeah. up. Well, it doesn't affect, 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 affect me at all. 
<laughs> That's all, folks. You got to yell at people, Dan, if you want to motivate them. <laughs> well, yes, in, in certain true. ways, yes, but there's ways to do that by elevating them, but also keeping them so that way when they get back to doing what they want to do, that they still have that feeling and they can carry that feeling over into what they're doing. Because if they get back home and they're going back to their same old, same old, you know, what's going to at home get them motivated to do what they w need to do or what they want to do. You know, you got to be able to babysit all these people that say, yeah, I want to do it. Mm. And I say, come to the power hour, pick up all the knowledge you can from the panel that's there and they don't show up. Yeah. That's their yeah. loss. Yeah, if they're they scared. If they don't show up, then I move on. Yeah, that's yeah. their loss, man. You know, if you're asking for the advice and you, you're too stupid to take it, yeah. move on. Beautiful. I had coworkers yeah. like that. They, they would always complain about this and that and the traffic and you know there's people out there they don't know how to drive how come this is happening to me and i'm like did you ever think that you're putting out so much poison it's coming back to you and maybe like not acting like this and not looking at the world so negatively could actually affect like, you. get up maybe 20 <laughs> minutes earlier and miss it. <laughs> yeah. that's and what i always say when i'm driving in the morning and my coworker just like Cream, is that more of that positive thinking stuff? I'm like, yeah. They're like, go sit down. They're like, man, life sucks. I'm like, uh, imagine uh, that. <laughs> like, no, that's a positive application. Get up 20 minutes earlier. No, you don't want to get out of the comfort zone. <laughs> well, that's part of it. You got to want to get out of your comfort zone. You got to want to really desperately want to get out of that comfort zone to be willing to push yourself to get out you know it's got to come from within you know my next major project i'm going to take on is setting up a blog yay we can help you with that francis and i can even yell at people for you if you want <laughs> <laughs> i'll get on your videos and be like hey blog what'd you come to this website for did you come here to screw around or are you serious about taking action get off your ass <laughs> Subscribe to this blog now and let Francis help you. <laughs> Francis, what we call? He's yelling Quit at me. Quit making excuses. He's yelling at me. What happened to those other marketers? Hi, I'm Bob. excuses to the road and, and ah. get on. <laughs> Yeah, well. Stop wasting fresh time. Click the link. <laughs> you know, the, the four letter words and the <laughs> yep. four words. Wow. You know, that's yeah. something to get them attention on my blog. Stop taking your antidepressants. They're frying your brain, guys. They're making you passive. Stop drinking your tap James. water. The fluoride hurts your brain, uh, too. Uh, uh, uh. James Smith, raise his hand. What up, James? Well, uh, you know, I just came back into the conversation. I had to take a phone call for about 20 minutes. But I caught the tail end of what you guys were talking about. And I find it interesting that that – that uh, people who have a bad attitude, don't have passion, are not enthusiastic, you know, are negative, can't understand why they're not succeeding. Yeah, I know. Isn't that great? It's when you encounter those people. Because if you're, if you're putting out negative energy, people get it. It comes over the phone. Every, every way, shape, and form, that negative energy comes at you. So you, attitude and passion for life and passion for other people is so important. That's all. James, you want to join my business? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Corinne. I'll raise my hand next time. Woo! We're, in the, we're in kindergarten now. Teacher, can I ask a question? It's Our like business is yelling at people, motivating them and yelling at them. Tell them to quit making excuses and, and sitting around watching TV all day and letting the media fry their brain. Like well, another part of that is... In this particular in this particular industry, you're going to find more people like that than you find who who are really motivated and the right kind of people. And all you can do is what is what you can do to kind of guide them and give them the tools that they need and give them a path. But recognize that there are going to be many of them who are just not going to grab on and go. Yeah. Find that out. You 
just you don't be negative to them. You just kind of let them go do their thing, and you focus on the ones that are that that are that are motivated. Mm -hmm. Find new ones. I have, I have oh. a question for James. Yeah, what? I had a question for James before sure. he went off. Uh, James, how do you find yourself motivating these people? Or do you just make an assumption after you talk to them that, oh dear, that... I got, that, one, guy, I got one guy, for instance, who's very right. proud of the calls that he makes. All the calls that he makes. And all the people, <clears throat> excuse me, the people that he talks to and all this other stuff. And I said, you know, that's all good. That's the activity. That's the action you need to get to the next step. But you're, we can evaluate when somebody's sending traffic to their site. And he's getting no traffic to his site, and he's getting no signups. But he talks like he's working his buns off. And I said, you know, maybe you are, but you're not, you're not producing. This game is about moving product. It's about making sales, no matter how many ways you cut it. Ultimately, that's how you will be evaluated. And so until you can make that happen, the rest of this work is nice, but you got to figure out how to take it to the next level and actually get people to engage with you. But so do you do just be, practical, be practical with people because they're never going to succeed, particularly if it's in something where there's sales, they're never going to succeed if they don't move product. I agree, and how do you get them to do well, that? Well, you're going to get everybody. You do the best you can, and when they're not responding, then you move on. That's it, you know? Uh, I agree. You're not going to get 100% action. <laughs> in, the per in the perfect world, you would be, but it's not the perfect world. <clears throat> nah. Okay, yeah. I, I won't. I'll move on. I I just wanted to see how you how long you babysit this person with your knowledge before you cut them loose. Oh, Lee and Kareem can attest to that. When we were in mentoring for free, that's all we did was babysit people. Are you gonna come on the call with us tonight? It's like, yeah, I'll be there. Then you know they wouldn't show up. It's like, wow, yeah, I guess this mentoring for free thing's really paying off. <laughs> no. I wasn't making a damn cent doing those calls or mentoring all those people. Well, that's because from a when... standpoint, when new people sign up for a, an opportunity, I like to divide the getting started instructions into administrative and then sales. And there are certain administrative things, and no matter what deal you do, that you've got to do first. You know, you've got to put in an application, you've got to update your profile, upload your picture, you know, do all these things to get yourself set up, to get your website set up. And when you find have people, and I know you've experienced this, that don't even get that done, they're going nowhere. No, I mean, it's, we, it, that, this is what me, Kareem, Marsha, and other people who have taken the mentoring for free system and used it learned. When you've got people getting a book from you for free and they're getting all the training for free, they don't value your time. They don't value what you have because they're not investing anything into it. The, when people invest something into something they're more likely to go through with it because they've invested something and whether their time their money has been invested into something so you damn right they're gonna go and go okay how do i do this but mentoring for free is about not about that it's about coaching people till they're ready <laughs> Well, if yeah. I coached people till I was ready, I'd be sitting in a wheelchair with no teeth by the time th even 400 of those 1,000 ebook downloads I had are ready to go. Yeah, I think I want to be a, I think I want to be a networker now. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I could coach. I think I could own my life. It's like, man, you know, and, and that, that's just where it was going. It wasn't taking us anywhere. I met Kareem. I met some other good people through it. Yes, that I am now partnered with and we're working together, but Ugh. that system is in the stone age, man. They don't even have video conferencing <laughs> at all. I agree with you. Even though I do have uh, dentures at 66, <laughs> I am in a wheelchair. I, I, I did make both of those, but I did get people on the, on the grid before, before I got to that point. It comes down to this. But if I'm, they do have to have trans man transparency mm -hmm. and and put a video 
OEM conferences instead of just a, a blank screen so you knew who you're talking to. And uh, they do have to take action and follow instructions. If they don't, after three months, I cut them loose. And I tell them, within 90 days, you should, if you're doing the tasks that I tell you to do, you should be receiving a, a minimum paycheck of $100 a month or more. But I can't tell you you're going to make $300,000 in the first month. It's not, it's not practical to say things like that and mislead people. Francis, let me ask you a question. Um, do you consider yourself a leader? Absolutely. Okay, so here's, here's your goal for the next 60 days. As a leader, build teams of leaders. I well, have done that. I have. Well, what I'm saying, if you hear what I'm saying, what I'm saying is if somebody demonstrates that they, that they don't have leadership ability, then they're not, then they're not for you. If, if, if you're building teams of leaders that build teams of leaders and that's the goal, you only work with people that have the potential and are willing to put forth the work to become a leader. That's true. That's yeah, very true. true. Yeah, Francis, don't waste your time on people who say they might do things. I mean, you wouldn't come back to our I show every week. 90 days. And it I think that's even too long. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Fran. I think you need to give them a, a time to get their footing, get them going, get them up and going, and into the routine and process of what they need to do. You have so a that way, curve. Yeah. You have a learning curve, and you have to work with the learning curve. Mm -hmm. I've got five downlines going right now, and those people are building their downlines. I praise them, and I give rewards to people that are – building downlines that I'll say the first person on this team that has joined within the past week if if you get two people on your team and they're buying products then I will give you dinner for two at a, a restaurant of your choice in your area and I'll give them a choice of Kentucky Fried Chicken or pizza and uh, pizza Pizza Hut for uh, two people. Do you to think that, that's that person a chance to get out with their significant think, other? Do you, uh, think that's lie down on me. Hey, you guys quit talking over each other please. Francis what well, I heard most of that but no, I said I believe in the reward system, that they're not only getting more money, but if they're building my downlines by building their downlines, it's giving me money. So I give incentives of somebody that wants a night out with their significant other to give them a dinner out for two at Pizza Hut or right. Touchy Fried Chicken. <laughs> that's true that's true but Fran I think that the giving nature of us as I call us influencers I don't like the label leader because it it, it is a, it indicates that I have something that someone else doesn't have and everybody has the ability to influence others they just have to do the work to get there but I think that Francis you've been through so much with this whole entrepreneurial thing and you've seen many different things don't you think it's time for you to succeed? You know, I think it's time for you to to really be to be the one that makes it because you've helped so many people already. And I feel – go ahead. I do, Chris. I do Good. feel it's time for me to be making more than I'm making. I'm glad to hear that, Francis, because your worth is very important. And I think everybody should be a part of pay me what I'm worth. We'll figure that out. <laughs> and, uh, I think everybody should hop on that because reading the book myself, there's so much that you're going to find out about yourself and things that you fell short on or didn't quite 
meet the challenge, you're more equipped to meet that challenge now because you know what you did wrong to start with. Yep. Dan also has his hand raised. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to shut up. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, but now getting back to the topic that we've been talking about, how do we take somebody who wants to get out of their comfort zones and get to that point where they do take those action steps and they get past that so that they can be that, you know, that person that they want to see themselves become because that's part of the step because so many people are caught in that fear. They're caught, caught in that um, cage of, you know, everything, fear, doubt, you know, um, all those things that, you know, come into play that, you know, can stop somebody dead in their tracks and before they ever get anywhere. So how, how in that sense do we help gr build them and get them to, to where they can be, what, like what Fran says, takes that in action to where you can help build them up, give them those rewards, give them those things for taking that action. You can start by sending them to like the power hour. You can have them ask the question, how many people have used this technique in, in their marketing? It's an open forum. You can ask any question in the power hour. And you can come with them, lead them by the hand, and say, come with me to the power hour. Huh. And when they show up, say, I have a, a protege here that has a question, and let them ask the question. Mm -hmm. If Change. the question is, how or how many of you use email marketing, or what do you find is uh, relevant in using uh, email marketing, or what, what do you find is the equivalent of using uh, another technique, say video marketing, or you know, you can have them ask their question here and be in a safe atmosphere and get a lot of feedback. The more feedback they get, the more incentive they're going to get as to how important we think it is as a, a group. <laughs> and once you give them uh, something, some easy tool to use, and show them how easy it is. If they're too lazy to try it, shame on them. <laughs> I agree with that. James and Dan, what were you going to say? Well, for me, it's, it's not about being lazy. It's not about having the information. It's not about working hard to build a blog. 90% of the people who fail, their biggest problem is they're afraid to pick up the telephone. They're afraid to actually talk to people and have a conversation and understand the skills that it takes to properly direct that conversation in a way that gets the result that they want. That's why they fail. That's why offering them dinners won't work because their fear is far greater than a nice meal out. <laughs> and, and your subconscious mind has a, has a threshold for you when you want to go through major change in your life. It's called the terror barrier. And that's when the little conversations start to go into your head. Well, I'll do all the calls tomorrow. Well, I'll do, I'll do this on the Internet now. The, the bottom line is, is most people who fail don't engage with conversations. Don't prospect. Don't talk to people. That's the problem. Yeah, cold calling is terrifying for people or public. They're like, oh, I got to pick up the phone. I remember when I worked in IT, people were like, what? I have to talk to another human? Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny how everybody gets upset and stuff when they have a problem or issue, say, like with for an IT problem, something they're calling somebody and they get pissed and mad because, oh, I got to have recording. I want to talk to somebody so they can help me through the problem. So it's a dual-edged <laughs> dual sided sword there. So it's like, how do we get people 
to get past that fear or that terror barrier so that way they'll, they can do the action steps and, and get them there. Um, but, but a lot of it also comes from within themselves. They got to really want to and be willing to put themselves out there. It's just giving them the power and the strength to do that. It's you know? skills, it's skills training, and it's being willing to do it afraid. Because you're going to well, be afraid. If you give them a script, say, skills. say your say your opportunity is uh, medical or uh, online medical products, and you could give them a script that works best for you, since you're the leader, and tell them, try this script. Or uh, tell them to Google scripts for selling whatever their, their opportunity is. And Google is a lifesaver. They will Google you scripts that the top marketer uses in that company. And just ask them how many people that they tried to use using that script. And if they say they didn't get any and you give them a top marketing script, my assumption would be they didn't even make a call number one. Cold calls are terrifying for a lot of people. They really are. It's, it's ridiculous how far technology has come to be able to send text messages and send messages anyway, but humanity is still afraid. And I was talking about this with Jack and I've talked about this with Dan, a lot of people just pick up the phone and call somebody and, or, or even email them is a big, big step out of comfort zones that a lot of people our market, even calling your circle one people, your friends and business associates, for people who are doing it for the first time that, and now they've got an agenda, they've got something they're trying to invite them to. They don't quite feel comfortable talking about it yet or saying it in the right way. Those calls are terrifying as well. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be just a cold call. And that's a comfort zone that we have to break out of. And when people see this, if they're afraid to cold call, call, if you're afraid to jump in front of an audience, if you're afraid to jump in front of a camera, we here have done that, or at least some groups of people here are doing that now. So you won't melt, but you got to get yourself out there. Just get out there. If someone's like, so you're a social media consultant. What do you think? Just get out there, make a video, say, hi, I'm Bob. I'd like to juggle oranges. I like the sun, you know, I, long walks on the beach. As cliche and goofy as that is, just get out there. What's up, Dan? Well, I was going to say, you know, like for me, you know, I, I've tried telemarketing too. I've done the, I've had the scripts in front of me. And when I started talking, you could hear it in my voice. You literally could hear it in my voice and that I didn't believe what I was saying that I didn't you know uh, have passion about what I was talking about and that's the other part is people can sense that so then that builds on the fear because then you're uncomfortable the other person is uncomfortable because they know that you're not comfortable with what you're doing and what you're selling Absolutely, 100% agree Dan that that's part of the problem and so that builds into the fear and that gets to be so big that people aren't willing to go and do that. But if you can, it's like when you first learn to swim, you know, I can remember when I was first wanting to learn how to swim, it was terrifying for me. But once I got in, I had somebody there with me and who I ended up trusting and liking and knowing enough to where I didn't think they were going to let me drown or something. I relaxed and I got in and did what I learned, what I needed to learn and I became a you know a great swimmer uh, you know and a fish you know I'm like a fish in water I, I love to swim but it's those things and it's giving people those that believability in themselves to be able to do it because if they don't believe in themselves it's going to come out and show out and show through to everybody else and nobody else is going to believe you what you're doing it's people can sense that fear or that uncertainty. If I come across on the show and I'm like, Hey, welcome to the power hour. 
I have some fun. People are like, eh, you know, I don't know if I want to come back to this. But if I'm telling people, hey, come hang out with some friends, you'll have a fun time. And you can and, yell at people. And, yeah, but it's not just yelling. <laughs> and interrupting. Yelling or interrupting. It's about actually having that energy. And when people don't know what they want to do or what they want to be about, and they see someone who's confident enough to know what they want, they'll gravitate to that person. I want to segue that into welcoming our mentor, Marsha Sortino. I saw she jumped on the call. So, Marsha, we're talking about how to break out of that comfort zone. Woohoo! <laughs> well, you know what my answer is? You have to get out of the analyzer. Yep. It's the analyzer that gets you stuck. Yep. That's, that's exactly what happens. If you get in touch with that explorer, the, that explorer is willing to do anything. The, 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 the explorer is unafraid. It's the analyzer that keeps you in the fear. Because yep. you're going to analyze every aspect of how should I approach this person? What should I say? Uh, you're going to analyze it to death. And it's so easy to just say hello to somebody, even in a chat. Or, or on the phone and, and just have a conversation. And most of most, what the analyzer is doing is analyzing how in the heck am I going to talk about anything? Well, <laughs> hey, don't we all have something in common? We are all trying to build a business or yep. some kind of income from home. Yep. That should be a, a, a great start right there. You know what I... I... <laughs> I've been joking around being really animated again because I'm finding it a lot more fun. But I also say you can yell at people, <laughs> but you have to know how to yell at them. You know, um, it's just some inspiration I have from other YouTubers who are making, getting millions of subscriptions and views and they're, they're not really um, reserved. They're very animated and colorful. So uh, but yeah, analyzing stuff doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anyone see the passion that you have for what you're doing if you're analyzing stuff all the time. Well, I think a lot of the YouTubers, like what you were talking about, are people that don't take themselves so seriously. That's what I want to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. they don't They don't get so, going back to the what Marsha was saying, the analyzer, and they don't, you know, they just like, okay, well, okay, that's what happened, you know, or well, you know, and they move on and and go to the next thing or do whatever else or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, well, I'd love to be able to. That you made about projection, you know, projecting on the phone, whether you're afraid or uncomfortable or whatever, and that, that you're sensing that on the other end. I was once told that operators who work for the phone company have a mirror in front of them, and they're taught to always smile while they're talking because the smile comes through the phone. Uh, that was one of the first things that I used when I was doing uh, cold calling, James, and it's a terrific tool to use, and it does come through on the phone. I actually hadn't thought of that. That's like a great insight. I'm going to actually like bringing some mirrors here. I'm like, hey, guys, the power hour, get your mirror ready. All right, so what do you want to say, Dan? And I'm like, Dan, where's your mirror? He's like, hey. And Chris, I, I get it. You can, here's the thing. It's yelling at, you can yell at people, but it's really the energy. It's really not just yelling, but motivating them to make a, an actual change. Well, that's yep. what I mean by yelling. Here's the trick. Do it in a non-judgmental way. I don't mean yelling at them because they're being so lazy. I mean yelling at them to go, hey, what do you want to do today? Do you want to sleep all day or do you want to keep working that crappy job or do you want to do something about it? <laughs> you know, Look in the mirror. You are worth it. Do you want to do something about this now or do you want to wait five more years? That's the kind of yelling I'm talking about. Motivational yelling. Exactly. Motivation. Like, do, you want to be, do you want to be the one that gets stuck in the situation Mm -hmm. 10, 20 years from now, you want to be in the same spot when you want to move forward. That's right. It's called Take No Prisoners because I'm not taking any prisoners. I did that for five years with the other program I was in. It's like I had to lead everybody. Nobody was doing anything unless I called them to be on the calls, and my time wasn't valued. I'm done with that song and dance. 
Well, I just had to move on to something else. Well, of course, I, I left there almost a year ago. Actually, it has been over a year. Well, it goes back to having skin in the game and having something that, you know, is costing you a little bit to make it worth your while. Yeah, investing. If you have skin in the game, you're not going to put anything into it. That's right. And there's we learned that. There's, there's a, a coach on here that did that. There's a recruiting function, like an HR function which is you're not trying to beg and plead to get somebody to join your deal. You're going to interview somebody with a, with a serious set of questions to determine, are they worth your time? Yep. And if you come to the conclusion that they're not, sorry, your business opportunity is not for you. Yep. That's yep. exactly yep. right. Yep. Yep. Him and and hawing and well, I might, and uh, I wasted five years. Remember that Marsha? Remember all the him and hawing we did trying to build that oh, yeah. business? Oh yeah. And oh yeah. I've been through the, I've been through the ringer with it all. Yeah. So you know what? I I I actually know what I want now and what I don't want. Yep, me too. And once you learn what you want and what you don't want, you can change the whole thing. You can change exactly how how you do it. Because Marcia, <laughs> I'm not going to handhold anymore. No. I'm not going to be doing any of that. Uh-uh. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't mind starting off with helping somebody. But, hey, let's really know what our worth is. And let's really look at the time that we're spending. Because mm -hmm. we're not here for too long on this earth. Nope. We're really not. Marsha, you should yell at people more. <laughs> <laughs> You sure, you sure like yelling at me when you when I piss you off, don't you? Yeah, no problem yelling at me. I'm so direct with you, Chris. It's not funny. Yeah, but you know I can. You know I can handle that, right? But I think that's kind of the approach I'm. I have with the show now is I want to be direct with people and go, hey, if you're coming on here, this is our time, and eventually, our show is not going to be free anymore. I mean, certain aspects of it will be, yes, but when we're doing trainings or we're letting somebody present their business, there's going to be fees involved. There mm -hmm. has to be because we, we're – look, at what are we all paying for on this panel tonight? Let, let's do, let's do a, an inventory. Electricity, internet, you paid for the time. computer you're using, you're paying for the – the time is valuable, right? You've got um, – you got to some, some people have to buy certain software to use certain programs with. You had to buy your headset. Right? You had to buy the clothes on your back, the food you're eating, so you're not, you know, waddling off and starving to death on camera and, you know, you haven't eaten anything for 48 hours, so you're, you're fading away. No, I mean, there's, think, about all the, think about all the money that you're investing just by being here, and that's where I've come with, with this course. That's what I realize now is, wow, I am worth it. I am worth being paid for my time, for, my, for the skills that I can provide for people. Okay, now – going on with that because you're looking at the time that you're investing in what you could be doing if you weren't doing this exactly. to help people, yes. uh, yeah. grow your business and stuff you know and then for somebody like me i'm wanting to get grow my business more and i see value in jumping on here by awesome. throwing out uh, I like that information for other people to help break them out of that comfort zone you know, because I had to learn how to break out of some of my comfort zones and i still have comfort zones i still have to break out of you know, I think we all have different levels of things we still have to go through and, and get through, but that's part of what this is about is uh -huh. providing value and something that's of service to other people that will help and empower them and give them more to see the power in themselves. Yes. Most what definitely. They, what they have. We, choose our, we choose our energy exchanges, don't we? We absolutely do. Yep. And yep. we pay for everything, every emotion that we go through everything in life we pay for yes in one in way or another way. yep whether good or bad yeah that's right well this is why i suggest that everybody learn what you're missing in your own analytical way and get past that and go to pay me what i'm worth it's the best tool you'll find to get you processed through the analytical part and get on to what is going to work for you and find what your shortcomings are. It's a, 
personal journey and it's going to help everyone that's on here. Yep. And just a tidbit, Francis, um, I don't know if you got my last message, but the conference was actually tonight with Sol and Marsha. I did try to tell you that Sunday, um, but we have the call recorded, so me and Kareem will send you a copy to listen to. It's all good. You, you didn't get out of your comfort zone. She was scared, but we'll help you out. <laughs> we'll give you a get a jail out free card. But anyway, the the interesting thing is we know we're responsible for that experience because that mirror we can see it it's not just a smile and feel happy and good you can look in the mirror and actually see <laughs> the person who's coming back at you and is that what is are you happy with what you're seeing and i can say i am for a long time i wasn't and now that i can see i'm happy looking in that mirror not just because i have to talk on a phone or a cold call but because I'm actually genuinely happy in that mirror, I can go out and break out of my comfort zone and do crazy things. Maybe I will go skydiving eventually at something, or maybe I will go do some kind of crazy seminar. It, the, the whole world's open now that I'm not sitting there thinking about that. What did you call it, James? The fear barriers or whatever. Oh. Well, you know, or the terror barrier. Terror barrier. That sounds cool. It sounds like a Marvel villain. You can break out of your speaking to, and Kareem, this is not a problem for you, but if somebody wanted to do an actual seminar, you could go to any college or junior college and contact the, the person in the college that deals with whatever you're interested in speaking on and set up a day with that teacher or that professor to go in and talk to their class. You may pick up, and I've done that when I was in uh, MLP, uh, MLM marketing, but I actually picked up students that wanted to be entrepreneurs and they came on I don't even know because I'm not doing MLM marketing anymore. Uh, what what they're doing now, but uh, it's it's certainly a way to get people interested in marketing online or in pay me what I'm worth or in whatever you're doing. I'm going to seriously consider that because I wish somebody would have done that while I was in college because they just posted salaries and they're like, yeah, be an IT tech. And I'm like, woohoo. And, and nobody ever said like, oh, did you ever consider writing a blog or teaching a class about how to learn about or any of that? That never was a thought in my mind, but I wish it had been when I was 21. And I think that's a really positive thing we could all do. I think there's schools around all of us. Uh, or there's, I would hope there's some place, if it's not a school, some place where we could go and talk. I know Marsha is close to Boston, and I have a few I could go to. Maybe I'll pick up and say, hey, can I give a if seminar to the kids? If you feel intimidated because they're a college, and oh my God, I didn't graduate high school, I'm not college material. Well, go to a junior college and build your way up. Well, just don't tell them that you're a conservative or they won't let you in the door. <laughs> well, or, or, or on another, me and uh, one of my, my sponsor for the company I'm affiliated with, she and I went out and we actually used a library and did a presentation and some stuff in a library. And so, you know, you can go anywhere where you can find a space, a place, somewhere where you can – Get out there and push yourself, put yourself. I didn't do that. I'd never done that. She was the one that came up with the idea, so I just supported her. But I was following what she was trying to mentor towards me and, you know, show me. And it's like I did it and I helped. It's like, oh, this wasn't so bad. I could do this again. You know, it was like one of those type of things. Or, or yeah, like James just said, uh, attend meetups or – like he said earlier, go to Toastmasters where you can learn how to speak and get better out of, out of your speaking, you know, discomfort zone. Yeah. Well, if you take one person that 
is in your downline and they're having trouble building their downline and you ask them why, take and have them, if they're afraid to make cold calls, then have a workshop uh, for all of the entrepreneurs in your downline on one certain day and say the topic is cold calling. Take those people and on that day, we're going to demonstrate how to make a cold call. Because when I'm making cold calls, my back then my average of closing on cold calls was five to six out of ten calls. I got them into the opportunity. Wow, that's amazing and. That's this is really awesome, guys. I know we're at the top of the hour and James has to go, but I want to thank Dan Sissick, Chris Peters, my co host, Sharon Cortezano, Fran Richardson, Leon Alexander, Bill Smith, James Smith, <laughs> or Bill Maybauer, rather. I got that wrong. <laughs> and of course, Marcia Sortino. So, guys, I. I learned a lot. I'm a mirror has a lot of power. Don't go, don't be a conservative and go to college. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but a mirror has a lot of power. We can all influence people at our local universities. We can take this knowledge. If we just get rid of this analyzer, the terror barriers, push it away and start living and asking ourselves, what do we really want? And let's start going for that and speaking out at different places. No matter if you have a high school, college, or whatever kind of education, let's go out and rock this. So I want to thank everybody, and we'll see you next time on the Entrepreneur Power Hour. Good night, everybody. Good night, and thank you. You're welcome.